fathers and our first men. We should do considerations on this this Easter night, the festival night. We should continue raising considerations on this holy priesthood and the mystery of the priesthood of the battle between good and evil, and that the evil in the world must be faced, that the evil in the world comes from the priest. It's because the priest turned against God, named Adam, that we have evil in the world. It's because the priest committed murder, named Cain, that we have evil in the world. And it is because the priest, the high priest Caiaphas, decided to crucify Jesus Christ, that there is evil in the world. And this evil is only to be able to be accomplished because of the priest Judas. Judas went eagerly to betray him. And had he not gone to betray him, our Lord Jesus Christ would not have been crucified at this feast of the Passover. For they themselves had decided that we cannot crucify him, we cannot kill him at the feast, because of the fear of the crowd that was following him. But then an unsuspected great glory, a great happiness, came to the Jews, when one of his own priests, Judas, came and offered to crucify him, to have to betray him to them, and what would they give him? And he was scandalized, because there were 300 denarii worth, 300 pence of money that he could have stolen, that could have been given to the poor, he said, that was taken away. And every time that this man, Jesus Christ, had a chance to take charge, he did not take charge. He fled into the mountain himself alone. And so the priest, Judas, couldn't take it anymore, and he went and he betrayed Christ. If there is no priest, there is no betrayal of Christ. And those that attack Christ, who is being defended by the priest, they can never get to him. It requires God made it so that the priest stands between in heaven and earth. But it so happens that there is wickedness in the world because of the priest. And therefore, Lord Jesus Christ, when he became man, when God the Son became man, he sanctified a new priesthood. He replaced the priesthood of Aaron. And he was anointed completely in the entirety of his body. His humanity was completely anointed by his divinity. And he came to remedy the problem of priesthood. We must understand this about the problem of priesthood. It is only remedied by the death of a priest. The priest must die. When we hear of the death of other men, it is a sad thing. It is a sorrowful thing. But there is nothing more wonderful than the death of the priest. It was a priest who came into this world 2,000 years ago and who said, No one takes away my life. I lay it down to myself. And his greatest day was not this day, the day of the resurrection. This was a simple day. The day in which he showed his divine power and easily rolled back a small stone. How hard was it for him who was God to roll back a small stone when he had made all the mountains and all the stone that exists in the world. It was a very small thing to roll back a stone. And to rise from death was a very small thing. He had already risen so many souls from the dead, brought them back to life, and he created life itself. But what is it that makes Jesus Christ most wonderful? He died for the love of us. He died in obedience to his Father, and he died the victim and the priest. The priest is normally the one who slays the victim. This is all the priest could do in the Old Testament. He slew lambs, he slew different kinds of cattle and turtle doves, and he offered them up to God. But this priest, he slays himself. He goes before the Caiaphas and lays down his life. And what does he say is going to happen? When I die, when I am lifted up upon a cross, when I am lifted high and seen as despised by all men and die upon a cross, behold, I will draw all things to myself. There is no other way to get to Christ than the death of a priest. And hence when we discover that a priest has been martyred, has been put to death, or a priest has died from his labors. This is a most wonderful thing. 
As we read in the brief read in the office of pride every morning about the death of the saints, what it will say is he either died a glorious death of a martyr, or he was only a son of us who was only about 100 years old when he died. And what does it say? Worn out by labors rather than years, he fell asleep in the Lord. The priest must be worn out by labors. He must carry the sheep upon his back. He must go to death. He must seek death. Our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world only to die. And when he died, he slew death itself. He wiped it out. And then he passed on to other men, these twelve apostles. What did he say to them? Can you be baptized with the baptism whereof I am baptized? And what did he say to James and John? Can you take what I'm going to take? And they said, yes, we can. They didn't know that it meant they would have to die martyrs. They didn't know they would shed their blood. But Christ said to them, you shall take it. You shall. But who is going to be on the right hand and the left hand? On my, the kingdom is not up to me, but to the Father. So God will decide who is the Father will decide who is on the right and who is on the left. But whoever is a priest must take death. It is the glory of our religion. And that most wonderful priest, the brother of St. Peter, his last three days on this earth, in great joy he hung upon a cross. And Andrew, the brother of St. Peter, hung upon the cross. It was said, this man is crazy. He is so happy upon the cross, and he is preaching a sermon. And Andrew said upon the cross, Become a follower of Jesus. Enter into his holy church. Come to Christ. And if you are lucky, you will also be able to be crucified like me. And the word spread. This man is crazy. He is happy to be crucified. He has never seen a man so joy joyful in my life and Andrew hanging on the cross. And the king decided it was a great mistake to crucify Andrew. So he sent soldiers to that cross. And they tried to pull out the nails. And they tried to remove him from the cross. But Andrew said, you put me upon this cross. You nailed me to this cross. You cannot take me down. You cannot take this glory from me. And they were not able to remove him from the cross. And in great joy he died upon the cross. It is the death upon the cross that saves everything. The death upon the cross that brings joy to the world. The death upon the cross that brings grace. It is the source of all happiness, the source of all peace, and the gate to heaven. It's the most wonderful thing to die upon a cross. And one of the simple natural effects is when you die on a cross, they may bury you. When you die on a cross, they may set guards at your tomb. They may seal the tomb. They may make sure it is watched carefully. But on the third day, you shall rise. There shall not be a stopping of the resurrection to whoever has died on the cross of Christ. The moment we can understand the great joy of the cross, this is our great mistake. It is true that all evil came in the world because of a wicked priest. But it is also true that God has will that it be through the hands of the priest that goodness come into the world also. That it be through the hand of the priest that we are wiped out, our sins are wiped out. That we receive the holy water of baptism. That we are able to hear the word of God from the mouth of the priest. That we are able to learn of the things of God and climb to God and go to God because of the priest. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say everywhere in the gospel? Whenever he cured, whenever he healed, he said to those people, Go show yourselves to the priests. And then when he was dying on the cross, on that cross, he made the most wonderful gift. It was there that he looked down upon his priest, John, St. John. And he said, Son, behold thy mother. We are in a time of a great crisis of motherhood in the world. Mothers are aborting their babies. Mothers are despised. 
A woman is supposed to be a worker. A woman is supposed to be a professional. A woman is supposed to go out in the world. A woman is supposed to rule. Be anything other than mother. We don't love mothers. We don't understand the greatness of mothers. And how are mothers going to be elevated again? When St. John beholds the mother. When the priest recognizes that the only way in which we can save this world is we must bring back the mother. She must be, he must behold the mother. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave this great gift of the mother of God to the priest on the cross. Where do we find her? On the cross. There is no other place to be than with our mother. We must be with our mother. And she is at the cross. Therefore, whenever we run away from the cross, we make a great mistake. It is a tragic and terrible thing to run away from the cross. We're all afraid of the cross. We try to run away from it. And that we must not run away from the Holy Cross. Now this might be made clear. Our Lord Jesus Christ said on Holy Thursday night, Do you have any swords? He wanted to make it clear that he is not a pacifist. That there will be holy crusades. That the army of God will carry swords. And that we must fight. Therefore said to the apostles, Are there any swords? And one of them said, Lord, there are two swords. He said, It is enough. It is enough. And then he went to the garden of Gethsemane. An old contradiction of contradictions. Peter pulled out one of those swords. And he cut off the ear of Malchus, the servant of the high priest. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, Peter, put up thy sword. It is not the role of the priest to pull out a physical sword. His sword is the word of God, which shall vanquish nations. His sword is in his tongue. His sword is in his heart. His sword is on the cross. But he shall not pick up a physical sword. He who lives by the physical sword, he shall die by the sword. Peter, put up the sword. And Peter cut off the ear of Malchus. The ear is the way in which we hear the faith. Once again, the priest made a terrible mistake, and he cut off the ear, which is the way we get into heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ cured that ear, put it back on. And Malchus was able to then receive the faith, because he had an ear. And Peter took it off. It was a terrible thing he did that. But our Lord Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of St. Mark, Peter, or rather St. Luke, Peter, I have prayed for thee. The devil is going to sift you like wheat. This refers especially to the pope, but also to the priests in general. It is going to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for thee, Peter, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. We are now at the time very close to the prayer of Jesus Christ, that great high priest be heard again. We must pray that his prayer be heard again. And the very weak Peter, who was a very wicked Pope Francis, that the weak Peter listens to the Holy Father, listens to the Holy Mother of Heaven, rather, who you is the Holy Father, and congregates the grace of the back of heart of Mary. And when he is converted, he shall strengthen the brethren. And the priesthood shall bring peace to the world. And the priesthood shall wipe out Satan. Yes, it's a tragic thing that evil came in the world by the priest. But it is the most wonderful thing that good comes in the world also by the priest. And love comes in the world by the priest. Peace comes by the priest. Truth comes by the priest. And this is the duty of every Catholic and every man, woman, and child on earth to pray for the priest. There must be a prayer for the priest. That the priest might repent of his poor sins. And that he might come back to the holiness of his priesthood. And that he might be as he is meant to be. An altar Christus. Another Christ. And the Christ whom we are like unto. He hung on a cross. The Christ whom we are like unto. He traveled to that cross. He would not put down the chalice. He went to the cross. And in the cross he defeated Satan. In the cross was his joy. In the cross was his strength. In the cross was his glory. And his most wonderful prayers that transformed the world were only prayed from the cross. 
Well, let us pray for priests to benefit from the crosses that God sends them. And there will be a conversion of priests throughout the world, and especially the high priest, who is the Holy Father in Rome. And he listens to the Holy Mother, and when he listens to heaven, there will be a transformation of the world, and Satan, who used the priest to bring sin in the world, shall be defeated by the priest. In the end, God wins, and the devil always loses. And as the devil used woman to destroy man, and used priests to destroy all mankind, so God will use woman to save the entire human race. And this is our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he shall use the priests to save all mankind. So let's pray for the priests, and that the priests may be faithful, and to return away from sin, turn away from sin, and back to the ways of God. And we wish you all a happy Easter. And God bless you all then, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.